We're on lesson three of chapter six, which is using properties with rational numbers. First, we're gonna write equivalent expressions. Then we'll write equivalent expressions without fractions. Then we'll do a real world problem. And let's start with an example of distributive property. If I had eight times three and I added eight times four, eight times three would give me 24, and then eight times four would give me 32. If I added 24 and 32 together, that would give me a total of 56. Since I'm multiplying the three and the four by eight, I could just simplify this very easily by adding three and four together before multiplying. So for example, if I did eight times three plus four, which would be seven, I could do eight times seven, which gives me 56. Sometimes it's easier to do math this way. Sometimes it's easier to do math this way. And we're gonna do a couple examples here which show those. So it says Orlando works part-time at a moving company. He earns $12.75 per hour. He works for four hours on Friday and seven hours on Saturday. Use a distributive property to write equivalent expressions showing two ways to calculate Orlando's total earnings. So that's the idea here, using distributive property. We have this method here where you're multiplying separately. And you have this me method here, you add then multiply. So for example, I know that on Friday he earned four hours times 1275. So 1275 times four, and then he worked seven hours where he made 1275 an hour, so that would be 1275 times seven. So I could add these two together and get my answer. So 1275 times four, 1275 times four is 51, plus 1275 times seven is 89.25. Adding those together would give me a total of 140.25. Now what I can do instead, since I know he worked for a total of four on Friday and seven on Saturday, he made the same amount each day, I could add the four plus seven to see that he worked a total of 11 hours. So I could do 12, 75 times 4 plus 7, which would be 11, and that would give me 1275 times 11, $140.25. So either way, Orlando makes $140.25. Um, to me, I like this method better because it just seems faster. I did 7 plus 4 to find 11 hours and multiplied that times his hourly wage. Here's an example where using properties can make our lives a lot easier. For example, we need to write an equivalent equation for one-third x minus four equals two-fifths that does not contain fractions. Then solve the equation. So if we write this equation again, one over three x minus four equals two over five. It's a lot of work for us to add four to two-fifths and then divide by one-third because sometimes fractions do take a while. Well, we can get rid of these fractions actually. And the way to do that is to find the common denominator of these two numbers and then multiply that times every single thing in this equation. So I know that three goes into 15, so does five. So let's multiply everything in this times 15. If I do this times 15, that would be 15 times one, which is 15, divided by three is five. So five X minus four times 15, 4 times 15 is 60, so minus 60 equals 2 fifths times 15. 2 times 15 is 30, divided by 5 is 6. And there you have it, we have this new equation, which is exactly like the previous one, except no fractions. This is going to be pretty easy. I add 60 to both sides because we're subtracting. That gives me 5x equals 66. Divide both sides by 5. 66 divided by 5 is 13.2. So 13.2 would equal x, and that would be my answer. Let's do another one. It says Maxine is replacing a 14.25 meter row of wood floor. She has already placed a strip that is 0 0.75 meters long. How many 1.5 meter strips of, of wood does she need to finish the row? Write and solve an equivalent equation without decimals. You see this, we need to solve the equation without decimals. So we know this is an equation. And remember, whenever I do an equation, I always start with my equal sign. It makes life a lot easier for me. 
I know that the total needs to come out to 14.25. So the 14.25 goes on the right side for me. And on the left side, I need to figure out what do I need to do just to equal 14.25. So the strips come in 1.5 meter long. So it's asking us how many of these do we need, right? So we would need to do 1.5 times x, a thing we need to find out. And then we need to add something we've already laid, right? We've already laid the 0 0.75. So we'd have 1.5x plus 0 0.75. So 1.5 strips of wood times the amount of strips plus the 0 0.75 we've already put down equals 14.25. Some people find worked with decimals to be annoying as well. And we can actually get rid of all the decimals too. All you need to do is find the number with the greatest number of decimal places. So for example, I see this one has two and this one has two, they're tied. So they're in the hundredths place. So since they're in the hundredths place, I can multiply all these times 100 and get rid of all the decimals. So when I multiply times 100, I move that decimal over twice. So I have 150x now plus 0 0.75, move it over twice, that would be 75 equaling 14.25, move it over twice, that'd be 1,425. So this would be my new equation without decimals. I can subtract by 75 now. So 1425 minus 75 would be 1350. So 150 X equals 1350. Divide both sides by 150. So 1350 divided by 150 equals nine. So it would take nine of those 1.5 meter strips of wood.